My name is Benjamin Minus, and um, I'm a homeless man in the streets of New York City, uh, Manhattan. I've been homeless now for about, a, say, about a good, I say about a good 10 years now, off and on, off and on, you know. Uh, this is a real easy situation to get into. You could be, you know, like, job and everything one day, the next day you could have nothing, you know. You could be sleeping on the street like me. Uh, my situation is not that complicated, you know. I had a lot of deaths in the family and uh, uh, a lot of other bad things happened to me. Uh, lost a lot of family members I really care about. Well, how I got in this circumstance is, um, you know, uh, just getting in fights with the family and, um, you know, wanting things my way. And uh, some people just, they don't understand. And, and I got booted out of my house. So uh, I, I was told I wasn't allowed back. Um, and, and then I hit the streets. Now I've been out here on and off now for two years. And I was on drugs. I took mescaline. I got, became uh, schizophrenic. And what they could do to help stop turning the people down when they try to find a place to stay, get warm, and uh, subways and things like that. They always come to the subway with the police and want to put you in jail, things like that, instead of taking you to a shelter. Shelter is overcrowded, bed bugs, roaches, mice and everything. You gotta clean the shelters up, because that's why the people won't go into them. My name is Lori. I, I am from the Bronx, um, born and raised. I do work here in Midtown um, every day, traveling to and from work. Um, I see a lot of homelessness, uh, and it could happen to anyone. It could be me. It could be you. It could be my. It could be the cameraman. So. Uh, we need more awareness. We need people to see what's going on out here. Um, I do bring sandwiches and waters from work. Um, I work in a restaurant. Um, they throw a lot of food in the garbage and it ver it's very upsetting to me that food is being thrown in the garbage and there's people starving um, but five blocks away. Me personally, you know, I just made some bad choices and you know, like everybody has safety nets, almost everybody, family, stuff like that. But uh, I wasn't so lucky, so it only took, you know, two, three bad decisions, living paycheck to paycheck, losing my job. You know, it really it wasn't hard at all to get into this situation. I feel like, you know, I know that when I recover from it, it's really gonna be a wake up call. You know, I'm not gonna spend money the way I used to on stupid shit. I'm really gonna plan for the future and save, you know, as a young man. It's hard, I feel like nobody, they, they, you can never save enough. Nobody saves. So, you know, that's how I just wanna change my life a little bit. Hi, my name's Marissa, my age is 23. I'm a domestic violence victim and I'm homeless because of it. I've been homeless for about three years now. It is very easy to get into being homeless. I mean, there are others, not me, but some people are homeless because of being drug addicts, doing drugs, or doing too much alcohol, or um, some are in severe domestic violence situations, like their parents abused them, or their family, or their loved one, their um, partners. I, I was uh, married, me and my wife separated, that's it. And I got, I'm, I've been out here for a few years now. That's about it. Man. There are several ways to easily be homeless. For one, you can be 18 years old and, parent, and you don't mind your parents, you can get kicked out, that's one. Uh, if you don't have a job, that's two. Um, if you're on drugs, heavy and hard, that's, that's another. Um, Basically, people that doesn't take care of themselves, don't give up on life, that's another. My name is Melvin Ashford. Um, I've been over here, I'm originally from New Jersey, from Newark. I came over here back in 2011 for housing. Um, I entered a program that's right around the corner at West 30th by the name of Urban Pro, uh, Urban Pathways, and um, they tried to assist me in this endeavor on getting housing. And um, I was over here now for well over two years. 
and I finally got approved after twice being rejected through HRA for housing on uh, the conditions that my substance abuse uh, issues wasn't long enough, the history of it, or for my mental health issues. Uh, that I was taking, um, uh, taking Lizolaw for, um, for ST, PD, stress traumatic post disorder for something that had happened to me when I was younger and I try not to uh, venture that area. Um, but like I said, I've been over here, uh, it's been a hard struggle, it's days that I've been depressed, it's days that I want to give up. I don't know, I think a lot of us uh, fall on uh, the problem of uh, not having no family. Um, this is, this is a, an issue that definitely needs to be addressed. Uh, I don't have the answer to that, but I mean, you know, my, my personal opinion is that it, it, it's a lot of work you got to do uh, to, to stop this thing that's going on here. It's not good. And uh, I hope it doesn't have to take for a few people to die for, you know, some people to wake up and see what's really going on here in the street. My name is Rafael Roy. I started the blog Homeless of New York. It's a take on Humans of New York, but it's it's covering the invisible issue here in New York City, which is a rising homeless population, which is at an all-time high statistically. It's sad to say that, you know, 90% of us out here are because of drugs and alcohol. Um, and really, there. There's not a lot of help out there. I mean, yeah, there, there's some detoxes out there, but they make it so hard for us to get into these detoxes to get help. And then after detox, then what? You know what I mean? Uh, you go right back out to the street, you're homeless. You know what I mean? Or, or you get locked up and then you go to jail. And then, so when you're done your sentence, what happens? You come out, you're, you're homeless again. You commit a crime, you go back to jail or you go back to getting high. Uh, and, and the shit that's, that's really messed up is panhandling is technically illegal in New York City, yet, you pay and handle on the block, and the managers that run the block get security to harass you to get off the block, even though the cops say you're allowed to panhandle there. So what is it? You're allowed to panhandle? You're not allowed to panhandle. I don't get it. Basically, there's no help, and the situation is getting worse. In the streets, people are choosing to be in the streets because the shelters is not helping them. People have been in the shelter for years. So therefore, they're pushing people in the corners when people are making a lot of money at Madison Square Garden, Yankee Stadium, and there's, there's no help for the homeless. And I hope this will help people understand and bring awareness to the people that to help people that is in need. BRC, uh, Common Ground, they help you out. You stuff like that. Other than that, you got like churches that help you out with food and stuff. That's about it. The shelters and stuff are cool, but you know, they got 60, 70 people in a dorm. And, and like maybe they could break that off into two to three people to a room, you know, because I, I won't go to shelters because there's 60 people in a dorm or, or a bunch of uh, lawn chairs in the basement. They call that a shelter, you know, but they, you know, maybe they could uh, do some, some real housing. You know, I know that in other countries like Switzerland, for example, there's no such thing as homelessness. I had a friend that lived in Switzerland and he said they, there's no such thing as homelessness. They, people get their own apartments and stuff like that. And, I know America's a lot bigger and everywhere is different, but maybe they can uh, help out a little more for the people that are willing to help themselves. But what the people could do more to help homelessness in the street is to try to maybe, you know, maybe we could uh, do a right to Congress or something to try to talk to them. Maybe they could get some housing for us or something. Uh, but the people in general, they could come out, bring hot food, uh, bring hot coffee. Cause you know, now it's getting to toward the winter months it's getting cold. Some people just won't go in the shelter. They just won't go. Uh, I try, but it just don't work. It's just too much. You know, it's like more peace of mind in the street. It's a housing issue. It's a policy issue. Um, but more so than anything, it's a human issue. There's no place to go. It's cold. There's no place to go. You're sitting, you're sleeping in uh, doorways, bus stops train stations, Penn Station, Port Authority, and they tell you to get out. 
and you have to walk in the cold and find a place to stay. There's no place to go. And BRC comes to pick you up, outreach. He comes to pick you up, homeless outreach to pick you up. Oh man, it's it's unbearable out here, man. You go on the go on the train station, oh, you go on the train station, try to sleep. Cops kick you out. Don't matter, yo. Just I don't know. It's just hard. I ride the train sometimes in the winter time. I stopped sleeping on the train and I just decided to sleep outside instead on the street because I thought it would be safer being on a sidewalk than on a train. They cut back on the food stamps, uh, cash, they make it so hard to get the cash. You have to go do a 30-day work program. Uh, you got to travel an hour to get there each way, stay there for five hours, uh, and do that five days a week for 30 days just to get the cash. I mean, if a homeless person is doing that, how is he going to survive? How is he going to make any money? How is he going to, how is he going to eat? He's going to be trying to do the program all day long just to, just to get a measly $140 a month. Yeah, I've noticed that since I've been in New York City, as more years go by, I can see more and more homeless people on the streets. So as you can see, there's, if you go down the block a couple of feet, there's more, there's more homeless people down there. And then there never used to be like that because when I first started sleeping on this, this street, there was no homeless people there. I had to remove myself from the shelter because I was not getting housed, I was not seeing no housing package. I went to Potts, part of the solution in the Bronx. I seen two housing packages and I got no interviews and no home yet. And I got an income. They need a, they need a place, um, what do you call it? They need more housing. Housing, they need more housing. You know, shelter is sending you to house. You gotta stay in shelter 17 months a year before you can find housing. The shelter system's terrible. A lot of people say it's more dangerous than being out on the streets. So a lot of people prefer actually to not be in the shelter system. Um, a lot of them have communicated to me that it's, it's not taking their life into their own hands. They've, they've got some strict curfews at, at a couple of them. Um, and the facilities, quite honestly, are lacking. Uh, for lack of a better term, I would say they're actually, they're, they're inhumane in, in a lot of cases. It's gonna get really cold in the winter, so I think they should give us homeless people more rights. And public places should allow us to, um, allow us to use the bathrooms, because a lot of times I try to go in public places like restaurants or stores and stuff to use the bathroom and they say no to me and they say you have to buy something. But that's not fair to us homeless people because a lot of us don't have money to buy something and then we end up having to go to the bathroom outside or hiding somewhere and it's embarrassing. You know, a lot of people just don't understand. They, they look at us like bums, like, you know, like we're, we're no good pieces of shit. But that's not, that's not true. I go to church every Sunday, I, you know, and I, help out people. When somebody gives me a five, five dollar, ten dollar, twenty dollar bill, I give to other homeless people, you know, so people could uh, just not look at us like we're, we're, we're pieces of shit. Like, I, I'm, I, I probably see a couple thousand people a day and a handful, maybe five, six, walk up and ask how you're doing, <clears throat> you know, or anything like that. Not, not saying everybody has to, but when I'm standing here with a, with a sign that says I'm homeless, anything helps I'm desperate you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm I'm sitting here desperate that's how bad it's gotten for me you know I have five felonies on my record so nobody wants to hire me um, maybe that's something somebody could help out with you know uh, people get get expungements and I have to pay ten thousand dollars to get an expungement but uh, there's still some time to have be a little compassionate for those who do not have a place to lay their head at at night in the bedding area. Or uh, you should be great, great, grateful and thankful that you still have a house or an apartment because in one minute things can just happen like that. And it's not that you want anything like that to happen. You won't wish that on the worst enemy, but unfortunately, sometimes as they say, fate have a weird, funny way of stepping in their life. I'm white and 90% of the people that hand out money and food are black, Puerto Rican, Asian, 
Indian, you know what I mean? These rich white people, they, they don't even, they just walk right by us, they don't even look at us, you know what I mean? I've had people walk over me, walk over my sign, kick my cups over, just because they don't pay any attention, they don't care, they're, they're just worried about their $100,000 that they're making that year, you know what I mean? Uh, they definitely need to hand out some blankets, some coats. Uh, I mean, if there is other things out there, they need to make it more aware uh, for us, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of us are sleeping on the street and it's getting cold, you know what I mean? We're freezing at night. It's really hard for us homeless people because a lot of people make up stories inside their heads about us, like really bad stuff. They think us homeless people are the worst people and we're really not. A lot of us homeless people are really good and they think a lot of us homeless people we steal, we assault people or we do bad stuff and a lot of homeless people don't. For real, and I don't. Um, like, m most people don't even want to talk to me or help me with anything because they already know I'm homeless and they think, oh, I'm a bad homeless person. And that's very upsetting. I don't like that. And I actually don't have any friends because of that. And a lot of people will say, I don't want to be friends with her or friends with me is because, oh, she's. She's just gonna use me. She's gonna beg me for money all the time. And that's not true. A lot of people I talked to, or tried to talk to, I never begged or asked them for money. And the only time I'm asking for money is if I'm sitting down holding a sign, but I'm, I'm quiet and I'm, I'm gentle about it and I don't, I don't try to force people to give me money. And it's just really sad what people think about us homeless people. And it's not fair. We've all done it. We're all guilty of it. We're all uh, culpable. I mean, there there are times when I I've just passed by an entire block of people living on the street homeless because I I didn't want to look at it because it made me uncomfortable because it. It, it brings up for you the realization that there are tens of thousands of people around the city living like this and, and no one's doing anything about it. There are great organizations out here, that's for sure, but it's, um, again, it's, it's a band-aid on the problem. Um, people can help by just lending their hand, man, you know, like somebody like try to find food, just ask them. Give them some food, you know. People look at it, look down on us, think they're better than us, you know. So, other than that, they just need to be more aware because this can happen to anybody. There seems to be a lot of cutbacks. Uh, the mayor, uh, whoever's doing a lot of these these services, are cut back. The homeless shelters have been cut back back as well, um, which is uh, is beyond. I <laughs> don't understand it, but yeah. So yeah, we have a lot of cutbacks. There's programs that were that are no longer in effect anymore. Um, there's shelters closing in New York City, and there's still homelessness. So, you know, uh, what can we do? What can we do? Write to congressman, uh, call somebody, uh, get in, get a hold, get a hold of somebody. Write to the president if you have to. I mean, I wrote to Congress about this situation, and when I'm coming to work every day, there's people out here that are no place to live, nothing to eat. It's getting worse, man. It's getting worse. Because people are removing themselves from institutions to come in the streets because the streets is more safer and more productive because I can get something to eat, something cooked, something home, something hot. Not TV dinners every day. I think the homeless shelters, drop-in centers, and people who give out free food out on the streets need to really start giving out more healthy food and food that fills people up, especially for us homeless people. Because most of the time, people who give out free food for homeless people, it's not filling and it either causes like problems going to the bathroom and stuff like that, or it makes us sick. Um, usually they give out soup and sandwiches, and that to me is not fair because if you look at what people eat inside a house, people eat a lot better stuff like a, a big steak or a few potatoes instead of mashed potatoes, um, like m like even a big plate full of spaghetti with big pieces of meat in it. 
and a lot of vegetables and fruit, but they don't give that to, to us homeless people. And it's, I don't like it. I wish they would do better for us. The food is everywhere. People are pretty generous. There's a lot of, a lot of food being handed out by different organizations too, but what really needs, what we really need is uh, places to shower, definitely more places to shower. I know there's only like two places, one in Jersey that I go to, and there's one out here that I haven't even signed up for because I haven't been able to find the person. Um, and then there's also, uh, what else? Um, shower, definitely, and then um, blankets, definitely we need blankets. Blankets in the wintertime are a necessity. And, and places that we're allowed to sleep. I know like we get kicked out of a lot of places and are told that we can't sleep certain places, so. Everybody needs something different. You know, there's like the simplest things make the biggest difference in the world, like showers, you know, a place. One of the biggest things is having a place to put your stuff. You know, like I left, I put a lot of my stuff in storage and then just took necessities that I needed, clothes for interviews, you know, um, like bath products, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste, shampoo, stuff like that. And I've managed to fit all that into a duffel bag, you know, like five outfits, toiletries. But um, even that, even just a duffel bag, like you don't want to be bringing something like that into job interviews and stuff like that. Or even just lugging it around every single day. It's tough. You know, I've been doing it for two weeks now and it's, it's not easy, you know, and it's like when you got everything right there in that one bag, it's so easy to lose it. So I can't like stash it somewhere. I always have to have it with me. Food, blankets, and um, um, help center, help center. Come out and uh, bring hot stuff to eat and you know coffee and you know but but for all in all they're doing a hell of a job you know for the people that do do it I really uh, thank you for everything that you do for the homeless you know the donations and you know, the food you know. I really appreciate you you know food blankets showing that you care man it's, it's, it's very simple sit down and have a conversation with someone um, reach out you know, you, you don't have to give money, you don't have to buy someone food, you've got to just look people in the eye and, and ask them how they're doing, genuinely. Like I said, as humans, as citizens, Americans, let's, let's help, let's do something about this. Definitely, long underwear, uh, coats, I mean, uh, and the Salvation Army, it's, it's a five billion dollar company. Uh, that people donate gold, jewelry, coats, uh, and what do they do? They sell the coats. Why aren't they coming around handing the coats out to the homeless? You know what I mean? What's up with that? It doesn't take that much. If you got an old coat that you might not use anymore, and you had it for five years, you know, come down here on West 31st. Pretty sure over here by St. Francis of a of a glacis or a sisters, what is it? That's, uh, I believe it's, a, it's Francis of a sisters, but it's a church that's right over here, and they take on all donations that people would like to give and contribute to the homeless. You know, um, it ain't got to be financially. It can be um, something as small as a pair of boots that you don't wear no more, sneakers. You know what I mean? Uh, some toiletries or something like that. But, you know, I can always help out those that's unfortunate than some. Somebody wanted to come and help someone. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of things people could do. It just really matters how far they're willing to go. You know, you put a dollar in somebody's cup, you know, that might mean they can go get a drink. Or you could do something totally, you could give them a room. You know, you could give them, you know, pick them up, get them dinner or something, take them home, let them shower, feed them. You know, there's so many different things that people could do and everybody out here really needs something different. So, even just like simple things like information on shelters or services that are available to the homeless that the homeless have no idea is even out there. You know, that might be 
the biggest tool somebody could have is just information. Until we change the perception of what homelessness is in New York City, uh, nothing's going to change. A lot of people have a horrible view on homeless people, even today, just like uh, people passing by saying things about me, like one woman said, if he's homeless, why is he out here? Like, I don't even know what that means. She obviously doesn't know much about the city and much about homelessness in general, but you know, it's just, people have a bad view on it. They don't understand, I think. Once you get into a situation like this, or even just knowing somebody that's homeless, it really opens your eyes to how, you know how it can happen to anybody. You don't have to be a drug addict, you know, or a bad person to become homeless. You know, it can happen to anybody. I know I see people out here with families, and they're all homeless and good people who worked their whole lives, worked 17 years in a job just to lose it. Six months later, they're out on the street. You know, not everybody has such a big safety net or relatives or places that they can go. It's a shame. You know, uh, wintertime, it, it, it gets really, really cold. It's cold right now, it's not winter yet, it's like October, but it is freezing. This issue has been at the center of, of politics in the city for decades. Uh, since the Giuliani administration and before that even. Uh, but we can't continue to put a, a band-aid on the problem. I mean, this is... It's, a, it's like putting a band-aid on a gushing artery right now. Uh, we're, at, we're at critical mass, and if this winter coming up is anything like last winter... I don't know. I, I don't know what it's going to be like out here. I mean, it's, it's, it's brutal. I don't know how it is in, in, in New York. I know in New Jersey, if it hits 32, it's code blue and, and they'll open up the uh, bus terminals and, and the train stations and they'll allow the homeless to stay in there so they don't freeze to death. Uh, New York, I don't, know what, I don't know what the deal is with New York. December at times, a lot of times, some of the homeless people is unfortunate and being that the cold weather would be zero degrees and a lot of them don't have blankets because I, not just because the midnight run didn't want to help those, it's just that so many of us. And uh, unfortunately, some of them end up perishing during like December 25th if they're out there and they're sleeping on the streets and um, they just go as a, a John Doe, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times some of them may not have any identification on them. I just think that it's important that we, as humans, you know, people, come come out, realize that this is everywhere. This is this is because this is coming on your corner where you live, or around the corner from your, your where you live. So you people, we need awareness. We need to. If you see somebody looking for something to eat, you got a sandwich, give it to them. It's not that serious. I'm quite sure you can get another one. You know. So I just wanted to make that point. So if you can, guys, just help the homeless. I'm lucky. I've never been out here in the cold. You know, there's a lot of places, even like downstairs Penn Station, where a lot of people sleep to stay warm. Hospitals, there's all different types of places people can sleep to, to stay warm. And it amazes me, because I still see people out on the street sleeping on the sidewalks when it is cold. And, you know, they don't want to, I feel like some people, they don't want to be helped. You know, they got blankets and they, they managed to stay warm enough to survive. But there's, New York City has a great shelter system and not a lot of people take advantage of it. You know, a lot of them are drug addicts or alcoholics and they don't want to deal with the 10 o'clock curfew. If having to go in there, that's like one of the biggest things. Just like being there at a certain time every night, you know. Obviously there's a certain level of irresponsibility that gets you into a situation like this and it doesn't help when they're trying to push all this responsibility onto you to try to get into a shelter or something like that. Build more shelters and not building more condominiums and stuff for these rich people, man. Help, help us our homeless people out. There's a lot of empty places around here, but they're building up skyscrapers for what? 
I don't know. That's about it. The average person could go to the politicians, go to the a higher up in the government, where they're giving out these affordable housing and they're building all these housing to just place people in these housing. They talking about affordable housing, but nobody's getting it but the rich people or the people that can afford thousand dollars rent. They're building everywhere in New York City, every borough. They're talking about affordable housing, but ain't nobody getting them houses that's got low income. I really wish I could find someone to share rent with as long as the rent was low enough because, I mean, I don't get that much money every month and it's, it's, it would be almost impossible for me to pay high rent. Uh, you know, uh, don't get me wrong, I mean, if you want to get off the street bad enough, I'm sure you can find a way, but they need to make it easier. They need to help us so we can get off the street. Uh, I've noticed 50 more people out here panhandling, you know what I mean? In the last month, it's getting crazy. Until you can look at someone on the street and, and see your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your best friend, because that's the reality of it. A lot of us are, are, are that close. A lot of us are a paycheck or two away from being out here. I've been in the streets for six, three years now. I've been in the system seven to eight years. And that's the best I could tell you. They gotta go to the politicians and everybody above, people that have money, people that don't have money, start marching for the homeless, man. And with that, please, in God's speed, thank you.